Hi, Tony here. Welcome to the channel where I'm at a rather noisy bike stop in Stevenage High Street. And I'm here because Showy are today launching their PFS or personal fitting system. So I've come along to find out what it's all about and I'm going to show you exactly what's involved. Okay, so I'm now inside the store. I'm here with Chris from Showy, who is running this launch event, um, an expert fitter. I'm not gonna tell you what's involved in this because obviously I'm an expert sat next to me. So Chris, can you just uh, explain to us uh, briefly exactly what the PFS system is? Uh, well, the PFS system has been uh, used in Japan for a number of years now, and the data that they've collected is now being converted into the European Fit Helmet models. Uh, essentially what it is, it's using this measuring tool uh, to measure the, uh, the length of the skull, the width of the skull, and the fitting height of the helmet. And then we also measure the circumference across those contact points. We feed that into Showy's PFS system, and what it will do is it will suggest a, a recipe, as the Japanese okay, call it, yep. for the um, size of the helmet, but also which of these pads which are in front uh, would need to be placed in which quantity and in which density and in which location. What that will then do is it will compensate for the shape of the wearer's head and the size within yep. the aperture of the helmet. And oh, hopefully okay. when they put it on, they go, Perfect fit. Oh, perfect, okay. Yeah, so that's quite different to some of the others I've seen where they'll just generally measure the circumference of your helmet. That's right. Well, if you think of measure it by feel almost, if you like. Indeed. If you, if you measure a circumference, a circumference, say, of a hat, for example, you can have a 56 centimetre circumference, but it doesn't um, compensate for it being a round head or an oval head. Okay. It just tells you what the distance is around the outside. What this system does is it will actually be a little bit more specific than that. Cool. Uh, and it will uh, compensate for the, the shape as well as the size. Okay, and you touched on as well that um, the, the Japanese helmets are a different shape. They have a different head form yes, in there? Yes, I they believe, do. Yeah. yeah, so the Japanese helmets are a rounder shape. Okay. Um, they also conform to Japanese industrial standard, JIS, um, and uh, the, the actual top of the uh, head is is slightly different shape as well okay. to the European Yeah, because I've seen people say, well, I've, uh, a helmet's been launched and it's not launched yet in the UK and I've mm -hmm. ordered it from Japan yeah. and it's a terrible fit. Yes. And that's the reason why. Yes, it's, indeed. If you're, unless you're, you've got a round head and you're very lucky that it fits you. Indeed, yes. So um, Sherry actually produced different shapes for different regions. So the Japanese helmets will be uh, smaller sized and rounder. Yep. The European helmets are an intermediate oval. Okay. And then the American helmets are a larger size and are more of a longer no oval. They also conform to a different uh, dot standard. Cool, so okay. So not ECE like the European ones. Perfect. So I'm here to get helmet fitted. And this will be interesting because normally I can put a large showy helmet on and say it fits perfectly. Chris might be able to tell us otherwise. So it'd be interesting to see, for me that thinks, yep, a large in any show helmet is gonna work well. So we're gonna go through the process with the GTR 3 to see how that actually fits. As I said, I think I should be able to put that on and it'd be perfect. We'll find out what the computer says. Uh, so let's just crack on with the fitting. Okay. Right then, Tony, I must warn you that I am going to touch your head in a rather intimate manner. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just be warned. You can at least so, pour me a drink first. <laughs> so the first thing you need to do is find your occipital protuberance, which is uh, okay. the technical term for the knobbly bit on the back of your right, head, okay, which is, yeah. is around about here. Um, so with this measuring tool, I'm just going to take a, a measurement of your length. Okay. So it's important for me to get the line of the tool level with that. And then can you just put your chin up a little bit for me? Thank you. So this is effectively measuring the contact points front and rear. So I'm measuring you there at 201 millimeters. Okay. Now, next I'm going to measure the width and the height. Now, you can see the width of this tool is a little thicker than perhaps the arms of sunglasses would be. Right, okay, But yep. uh, if you could just um, position this using your, your hands mm -hmm. to where it would feel comfortable if that was a pair of sunglasses, for example. Okay. So yep. about there? Yep. Yeah. So, let's do that. Okay, then you can let go. Okay. So, I'm going to say 157 okay. for your width. And your height measurement there will be 96. Okay. 
Um, so the next thing we're going to do is measure your circumference. Now what's slightly different about this is that we're not measuring the normal circumference, say where we would measure here. Okay. We just need to go a little bit more over the contact point okay. that we measured previously. So with that, I would say you're bang on 600 mil there. Okay. So I will pop that into here and then we press check on the system. What that suggests, Tony, is that you are a good fit <laughs> in a medium. So, um, okay. which you previously thought you were a large, large it's not, yeah. not a problem. So, um, basically, a medium or a large is a is a suggestion. Right. Okay. Um, generally, what I do is I try you in both just to see uh, which feels more comfortable. Do we have a medium GTR three there? There we go. GTR three. Should be in order. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So. Just pop that one on for me. Okay. You're in. Looks I'm a in. It looks a little snug in there. Yeah, it's a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So in which case we'll work with the large because that does look uh, uncomfortably a bit too yeah, snug. Yeah, it was immediately. It's it's snug, but it's snug that in half an hour. Yes, will we'll be an issue. We'll, okay. We'll cool. be we'll be um, having problems. So well, that's the beauty of this system is that. It, what it does is it also caters for people who've perhaps bought the wrong size helmet, so it will give the um, it will give the suggestions for sort of sizes either side. Okay. Um, this is the large, so that with yourself there were two two possible sizes, the medium or the large. Right. Okay. So with the large, yeah. Um, effectively, it's going to be reduced in size in certain points on the right, inside. Okay. okay. So you look a, a lot more comfortable in there. Yeah. So immediately, that feel, it still feels snug. Yeah. But but it's not as okay. crushing. So your eye line within the helmet there is good. So we just lock your head for me. So I mean, it's not sliding over the the top of your head there. And then if we could just push the helmet forward a little bit from the back. Yeah. I mean, you've not got a huge amount of gap there. I would say that needs some uh, minimal refinement, but on the whole, that's that's quite a good fit okay. uh, out the box. Um, but anyway, let's set some pads in. You can see the difference. So this is a PFS set which is um, suitable for a Neotec 2 or a GTR 2. Um, some of the pads have some commonality with the newer models, the GTR 3 and the Neotec 3. The main difference is that on the newer models, these crown pads are exchanged for uh, some oval shaped ones, which are similar to use the ones that are used in the XSPR Pro. So with each of the pads, there are different densities. So there's a soft uh, density and there's also a firm. And what the uh, Showy PFS system recommends is which pads in which quantities and which location you affix to the inside of the crown liner in order to compensate for the wearer's size and shape head. So okay. just to run you through what the, uh, the different pads are, these are the front pads. Um, these are the crown pads, so these go down the middle, the left and the right. These are the rear pads, these are the side lowers, or the whales as the uh, <laughs> Japanese like to call them. And these are the fish, which are the upper sides. Perfect. Um, there's lots of different pads for different helmets. So I can show you another set, maybe for an XSPR Pro or a, uh, a Glamster or a JO, and you'll see that whilst, whilst they are similar, they are different shapes because each one is bespoke cut. To match the liner for the front it suggested one firm and one soft pad so we'll just place that in loosely these are just test fitting pads so this is just to give us an idea of how the helmet fits before we actually commit to all right so you just put them in place, place and then they'll actually Correct. be stuck in yeah. once you're okay. always making sure that the soft side is uh, next to the rider's head so i'll just place those in so that's the rear and then for the sides, we have the whales. So it's interesting, actually, the medium, I probably, if I'd have put that on, I probably could have quite easily said, as you say, I'm somewhere in between the two, either would work. I could put that one on and go, yeah, let's bear with this and, and bed it in. Yeah. I presume you could then go for, could you go for thinner pads? You could, you could, you could have had a, um, a standard, it comes with a nine mil crown liner. You could have uh, gone down the size to the five. Okay. If you wanted to have a smaller shell size as possible, then um, that might have been a solution. 
but the difference between the large and the medium shell in terms of weight isn't huge right okay um, you might also be better having the larger the large shell versus the medium just to give you a bit more room around Another the face treatment. as well okay yeah okay so that's uh the suggestion in let's give it a try okay okay so this is with the suggested pfs uh, recipe in okay so we've got uh, one hard one soft in the front one hard one soft in the rear and a set of softs in the side So how's that feeling? Yeah, largely the same. I can feel a little bit more grip on the front, mm -hmm. not pressure as such, but there's a bit more grip there. Yeah. And a fraction more in just under that that hump of your yeah. on your head. Whatever you what did you call it? What did you say it was? The occipital protuberance. That's it, yeah. <laughs> so it sort of fits I can feel it underneath that yeah. now there's some pressure there so the pressure that you're feeling at the front and at the rear is that equal to the sides or you say it's perhaps a little bit more a little bit a little bit more on the front perhaps okay. all right so what we'll do now is we'll just refine that i'll take out maybe the hard one from the front and we'll just leave the soft one in and then we'll do a comparison it's a bit like the opticians one or two <laughs> one <Okay>. or two <laughs> perfect so we'll take that one out the front uh, and then we'll replace that with just a soft perhaps Okay. Yeah, so that goes that oh, way. Yeah, you can feel the difference. Yeah. Right then, Tony. That's with uh, one of the hard ones removed out of the front. Okay. Still the hard one in the back, soft one in the front. Uh, so you've got a hard and a soft in the rear, and then a soft one in the front. Right. Okay. Now yeah. is that feeling a bit more balanced? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. yeah the the amount of pressure on the well, it's not really pressure but that feeling of grip on the front mm -hmm. is just slightly backed off now yeah but it's, it still feels like it's gripping me for sure so one thing that we can do let's say for example um it was too close around the the, the mouth yep. we could actually take the pads out the back and then move them to the front which would move the helmet on uh, your head okay. to give you a bit more room around the right, face okay. but, yeah that's sometimes um, a problem that i do have but i think not with this yeah i think if it was a medium helmet yeah yeah, well, chin, I can't really touch on the chin bar. Okay. Even cool. if I'm trying. So again, just like you had for me. So that's that's gripping really nicely now. Mm -hmm. um, it, just push the helmet forward for me. So yeah, just like a tip of a finger in there. With your cheeks, if you open and close your mouth, are you just nipping your, the insides of your cheeks slightly? A little bit, yeah. A little bit, okay. And uh, pressure front, back, left, right, and the top all feels equal? It all feels very, yeah, very much an even pressure all the way around. Excellent. Well, in which case, I'd say you're good to go. So we'll stick your uh, pads onto your crown liner. Perfect. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, so, it's amazing, actually, how different that felt. Yeah. I mean, it's, we're talking like fractions of a millimetre. Uh, these are three mil. Mm -hmm. um, these are also three mil, but compact. But they'll compress down, down to, to like yeah. one and a half. Right. So we'll now take your crown liner out, uh, and then just make a note of what we had, which was that, 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 and these. Well, it's, what I quite like about this system is it is a bit more scientific than just a a, a, f a feel. Yes. In terms of how does that feel yeah. when it, sometimes if you're particularly, I suppose, if you're buying your first helmet, you won't necessarily know how it should feel yeah right then tony so now we've uh, done your test fit what we'll actually do is we'll replicate the test pads that we fitted onto the crown liner of the helmet so we'll position these on so that's your uh, one soft and this is your one hard it's not the first time you've had a hard one in the rear <laughs> so once these have been on for a few minutes um that it should be good uh for the rest of the liner's life you can still uh wash the liner as you as uh, as normal if you just give it a hand wash uh, around about 30 degrees 40 degrees okay it uh, should remain firmly attached so that's your front and rear is on Pop your whales on the side. So these are very subtle adjustments, but hopefully the subtle adjustments will make all the difference. 
obviously it will bed in a little bit over time. Yeah, around about 10% is, but, but, is normal. But yeah, not, a, not a huge amount. But actually, as you say, going into the larger shell size meant I've got more room in the, in the chin. And potentially I'm going to use this helmet for filming and I want to fit a microphone and stuff inside. So that's, you know, that's quite important for me. So that's kind of um, how it attaches. I've got one more fish to add, which okay. I need to go and get from the uh, from the stock. But uh, yeah, perfect. All right. Okay, Tony. So that's those uh, pads. Okay, now fully in. fully sticked in. Yeah. Moaning at my ham-fisted attempts at putting on a helmet. <laughs> okay, so still good. We'll just. Yep. Uh, click you in there at the bottom okay yeah that is spot on that is perfect like a glove to use an expression but it's definitely different from when i first put this on with as as a standard helmet it felt like it fitted nicely mm -hmm. now it feels like it fits properly all around the head mm -hmm. it's a subtle difference but one that uh, yeah. certainly can uh, huge difference make an effort yeah, yeah yeah so we're suggesting that the charge for this service is 50 pounds okay if you think of it as like uh instead of just going into a, a trainer shop and trying on some trainers it's kind of the equivalent of having a gate analysis and having some custom yes, yeah, exactly, made. yeah this is the service that we offer to our uh, our racers so the tt and the bsb okay. guys have this so for the customer that wants that perfect fit wants to go that extra mile, maybe somebody that commutes or uses the helmet a lot, they're wearing it for a long period of time where comfort is the, the most important thing, yeah, yeah. then uh, this could be the service. Also, maybe if you've got a, like a particularly odd shaped head or <laughs> okay, yeah, you've yeah. had uh, like brain surgery, maybe you've got a bit of your skull missing, okay. um, we can also compensate for yeah, that yeah. with the PFS okay. program. No, I think from, from, from that point of view, it's not a ridiculous price. If you're going to invest What's this helmet? 650, 650 pounds. If you're going to invest that in a helmet, an extra 50 quid mm -hmm. to make sure it fits properly and is super comfortable, it's a bit of a no-brainer, really, isn't it? Indeed. Well, sure, we do offer a, uh, an exchange program on the cheek pads and crown pads on the helmet from new. Okay. That's actually a service not offered by Showy themselves, but by Faridax, the right. UK importer, where we can go up or down at a cheek pad size, but it's not as bespoke or as tailored. Okay, excellent. Perfect, lovely. Thanks, Chris. All right, you're welcome. Wow. That's amazing. Okay, so that is the fitting process done. Very comprehensive. And it's amazing how just a little bit of uh, change to that padding, what a difference that makes to the helmet. So I'm done here at Bike Stop. Thing I'm going to do now is get out and ride in that helmet and give you a bit of feedback on how that feels. And we'll wrap up the video after that. <laughs> Okay, so I've now racked up a couple of hundred miles in this helmet and what are my thoughts? Well, it, the fit is absolutely perfect. I've got no hot spots. I've got no kind of red marks when I take the helmet off. I just get that really nice snug fit all around my skull. Um, it doesn't move around. It, it is, it's perfect. And because it fits so well, it is actually very quiet and that's one of the things i talk about in my helmet reviews when people ask is it a noisy helmet is it a quiet helmet depends on how well it fits you this now fits me absolutely perfectly and this is i would say a very quiet helmet but i will do a full review on the gtf3 that'll be coming up on the channel once i've had time to do lots more miles in it wear it in the rain all that sort of stuff um but having that personal fitting definitely makes a difference not only to the comfort but also to the noise adding the extra 50 quid in to get a customized fit is i think a no-brainer so um yep yeah, really really good definitely worth doing if you've got any questions about the process uh, or if there's anything that you're unsure of let me know in the comments section down below and all that leaves me is to say thanks for watching take care ride safe and i'll see you soon bye